Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome good evening. to our Wednesday night prayer meeting. Good evening. Such a good day. The sun shone after a while yes. in our part of the world, but it was shining all the time, just yes. like God's love is shining all the time. Yes. It's reaching out to us. Thank you, Father, yes. for your goodness and your grace and your mercy. We come before your throne with thanksgiving and praise because you are a good God and you love us. And tonight we get to come into your presence, Lord, and intercede on behalf of others and to make your will known in the earth through how we pray. So God, I ask that you'll give us wisdom and be spirit led as we pray your will in the circumstances that we're facing today. Thank you for all the praise reports that we're gonna hear. Thank you for those who are going to send in their prayer requests and for ones that we have that your will be done in every one of these situations. We thank you for it. We give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. You know what? Anybody got a praise report tonight? <clears throat> We'd like to hear it. I know Nancy had one. <laughs> oh, you do? Because I pray a lot and there I There you go. Answers. That's what I'm saying. Yes, please. I just wanted to report my son made it safely to Paris, and he got there. He left at two o'clock Sunday. Got there at six something the next morning, and he just called me today. He's not leaving this weekend. He's not leaving until next Wednesday because they have a little more work to do, getting it ready for the photo shoot. But he found he's me. doing all right. He's Good. all safe. No, Good. No, no parts falling off the plane, anything like that. Praise God. Amen for traveling mercies. Yes. That that was a prayer request yes. last week or the week before. Yes, you and, never know. And God answered. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Praise report with a young lady named Denise. That, uh, yeah, yeah, we prayed for her. Yeah. Crazy to me. Yeah. I was waiting at the elevator. And she walks up to me. Her face is red. There's tears in her eyes. I'm so so sorry, Cliff. I'm wow. So sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't see it come to you like that. Wow. 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 Hallelujah. Wow. Holy Spirit intervention. Breaking through. Come on. Amen. Jesus God. loves you too. Amen. 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 Praise God. Good. Then I have a prayer request. Yes. Amen. Somebody um, else have a praise report. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, girl. One, uh, well, Repentance is always a gift. I was Amen. angry enough to actually swear today, so I repented as soon as I said it. And it's always kind of really nice to know that, like, we actually can ask for forgiveness, yeah. and uh, He does forgive us. So, <coughs> but then there was, um, I was able to do the song on Sunday, and that was cool. And my mom saw it, and she said, "Grandma saw it." And she started speaking in tongues. I was just <laughs> like, "Grandma." what Jesus came to do. Forgive us for our sins. Yes. And we just accept it. When I got hit March 1st in my car, I wanted to swear that the young guy was a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I did this so it's going to be okay. You know, the Lord will get us through this. <laughs> Amen. Carrie uh, sent in and said that she apparently sat on some eyeglasses and they were covered by insurance. Oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> among other things. Okay. Imagine she smashed them. <laughs> yeah. My guess. Did Carrie did you just get out of the hospital? Carrie, uh, Carrie McCarthy. That had cancer. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. So uh, I don't know if y'all know it, but I know you know it, but you're not thinking about it. Maybe. But here's a praise report. Last. Week we prayed for our Easter Sunday service. Mm -hmm. 
yes. and for all who would come. Yes. This church was fairly full on Sunday. Yes. We had a lot of visitors. No parking yes. was available, but we had a full, nearly full house. Amen. And God moved mightily. Amen. And that's a something to be praising God yes. for. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Father, we thank you. I answer prayer. There were a lot of people who got prayers answered, and I heard some of the testimonies myself, which I can't tell those testimonies, but I heard them. And God answered prayer for some people, many Amen. people. Praise God. You know, a while back I used to look at that and say, yeah, just coming in on Easter Sunday. You know, that's the attitude I had. But that's a beautiful thing. Yes. When the Holy Spirit moves. Amen. Yes. Come on. Amen. It's not them coming in here. It's the Holy Spirit, Spirit moving. And why not? <coughs> because. Yeah, why not? Yeah, because yeah. we were that last person coming in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody was praying for us. Yeah, and this might have right. been the 99th day that's right. when we got saved. Yeah. And so somebody didn't give up on us. That's right. And it could be Easter Sunday that's for right. somebody else. Praise God. Yes. And I don't want to report on Sunday because I. It wasn't my week for the two and three-year-olds, but I checked with Suzette. We had about 10 or 12 little ones in there. There was no friction. There was no, <coughs> they were all <coughs> and having fun. And I, that was the Holy Spirit, because you can't have that many kids in there from age one to three and an older one. And they're all helping each other, making a awesome. pizza party. That, right. that was Easter right. Sunday morning in the children's ministry. Yes, yes. 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 In case you didn't know what she was talking about. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, Amen. Uh, Dalton told me that Poppy went in there. Oh, yeah. And he thought Poppy would be a mess, and she was just having a blast. Yeah. Everybody was. That's Nobody, what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the Lord. It's the Holy Spirit. He grabs a man like I'm a grandma or something, you know? Yeah. And they're all happy. And, Amen. Praise God. Yeah. yeah. So, norm so normally we don't take this amount of time to share stories and do what we're doing, but the reason why we're doing it is because Easter was a huge day for us, A. And B, we spent a lot of time preparing and praying for Easter. Yeah. And C, I want you to know the results of your prayers. Yeah. You need to know them. God answered a lot of prayers yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. A lot of prayers had Answers and people's lives were changed in many ways. Yes. And we don't have all the reports yet. They're not here. A lot of them are not even here, but I know them because I had the privilege of hearing them personally or experiencing them personally. So I'm just telling you. <coughs> God even hears. Mary Cole came in. Look at yeah. There you and go. It wasn't just here. I yeah. talked to my sister in Indiana and um, her church, she's Lutheran and both services, there was standing room only. It, their church was just packed, too. It was just the Holy Spirit. Moving. Oh, yeah. I hope a lot of people heard the truth. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Yeah. So, um, if you have prayer requests online, and if you have some here, we'd love to hear them so we can pray for them. I'm going to start out in just a second with uh, this scripture. Um You know what? I'm just going to reference it because I lost it. But what it is is in Jesus' prayer, he gave us the rules of how to pray when he prayed. Yes. Our Father which is in heaven, yes. hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come on earth the way it is in heaven. Yes. We can stop right there. That much we want to focus on tonight. The kingdom of God, what God's will is happening in heaven. In other words, use this, think of it this way. God is in charge of everything happening in heaven. Yes. It's the way he wants it. It automatically goes his way. Whatever he's having happen in heaven, it's his plan, and it's being done all the time with no problem. On the earth, it's another story. We're fighting against the enemy, Satan, who doesn't want God's will to be done. But God gave us the power of attorney, didn't he? Jesus said, use my name when you pray. Pray in my name, A. B, he said, I'm sending you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's going to remind you of everything I taught you when I was here, Jesus said to the disciples. The other thing is he said, the Holy Spirit will comfort you. 
That means he'll make you uh, understand what's going on emotionally so you can deal with it. And the other thing he's going to do is lead you into all truth. Yeah. And when he leads us into truth, when we pray, God, the Holy Spirit is moving to help us to coincide or go along with or understand his will. And then when we speak his will in prayer, when we read the word and we read it and we pray, and we pray in agreement, we're bringing heaven to bring yeah. on the earth. We're bringing God's kingdom in the earth. So when we pray for somebody to get saved, that's part of what God's kingdom yeah. is about. Yeah. People getting saved. When we pray for somebody to get healed, that's God's kingdom. When we pray <clears throat> for a certain situation to be taken care of, God answers prayer. That's his kingdom in heaven being done up there. We want somebody to love somebody. That woman we prayed for, whose name I won't mention, but you mentioned her. We prayed for her a month and a half ago that whatever it was, I forget what, but it was a real negative situation. And here it is now. She's crying back to you about being sorry. That's a step in the right direction twice because there was something else that happened before. And I'm waiting for her to get saved. She's already marked. God's looking into her life night right now because you had that interaction with her. And all we have to do is keep doing those things, keep following the Holy Spirit, keep praying his will the way it is in heaven that it comes to bear on the earth. Not only in our lives, but in the lives of our family and friends and whoever we come in contact with. Amen. So that's the position from which we pray tonight. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> you just said, I agree with you. Yep. That's, what, that's what you said when you said amen. So... <clears throat> Here's our our first request. Uh, our sister Angie Olson, her dad, had a stroke, I believe it was, and he had four strokes. Right. And um, the whole story is that we prayed, and we're continuing to pray tonight. I'm bringing it to you so we can continue to pray. But he's got much better, and uh, he still has some effects, I believe, in his on one side. Uh, I think he still has some slurring speech, but they said he's a whole lot better than he, he should be given what happened to him. So, uh, and you got, just talked to him? Oh, she just talked to him. And said that she was able to communicate with him. He was totally co coherent, believing for a total recovery. Good. All right. Thank you, Lord. So that's God's answer. We can thank him for touching Amen. his life. Yeah. And now we're going to continue that he finished the work that was begun. Yeah. Amen? Yes. yes. <clears throat> I don't know Angie's dad's name, but. Let's pray for Angie's dad all we'll out loud, everybody. Yeah, huh? We'll know in a second. Oh, okay. She's sending it now. <laughs> <laughs> Father, we just thank you for answering yeah, prayer yes. on behalf of Angie's dad. Thank yes, you, Holy God. Spirit, for going right there. He's in, I think, Nevada or someplace. <clears throat> but we pray right now in Jesus' name that you would touch him in his body continually. Lord, that you would restore what that stroke or strokes uh, tried to take away from him. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that you are already doing that. Thank and you, we God. pray favor over him and the Completely doctors recovered. and his wife. Completely and, Lord, we just speak recovered. healing to him right now in Completely Jesus' recovered. name. We command healing and to come into his body. Lord, you can do miracles. You've done it before, and you do it yesterday, and you did it the day before, and you're doing it even now, God. So we ask on the behalf of, of Angie's dad that you continue to touch him with your love and your mercy and your healing, recovering power in Jesus' mighty name. And we give you all the glory and all the honor. Hallelujah. Thank you for what you've done already. Thank you for bringing him through completely. In Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for a reversal of everything that happened so that he's better now than he was before. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for that. We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for some of those prayers that were answered on Sunday, who we don't know the answers to all of them, but, but we know they happen. And God, we thank you for touching that young man and that, that other lady and some of the other people that we know came forward, but they didn't fill out something that we know about. But we know that you did great things this past Sunday on many people's lives. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. We thank you for that praise report about the children in the nursery, that they all had a good time, that your Holy Spirit hovered over them. And there was joy in that place, yes, Lord, Lord, that those little kids in their yes. little spirits were being touched by being around a place where God is Lord. 
And we declare now, Lord, the seeds that were planted even in those little kids' hearts would have a harvest. It would put them closer to you, Lord, as they move forward in their life. Thank you for all the things that you did. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for little Dalton. That name comes up, and I pray right now that you will claim and touch him right now, God. Touch him right now. Touch his mom and his dad in the name of Jesus. Bless them, Lord. Bring them into a, a fresher, newer perspective about you, Lord. I pray that you would uh, give them grace and mercy in their marriage and all the things that are going on. We pray your blessings. You. We pray your love to be extended to them in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Charlotte uh, Reese uh -huh. and her co-workers just got notice that on May 31st, they're all being laid off mm. and they all need to reapply for their jobs. So she's asking for favor yes. in that reapplication. Father, we just, we just lift up Charlotte <clears throat> Reese and all of her co-workers. Yes. God, I pray for those especially that are in the kingdom, yes. that they would have favor that comes from you. And for those who are not in the kingdom, God, I pray that they get saved as a yeah. result of this. Somehow, yeah. you use everything, use God, Charlotte. you have. Use, use Charlotte, Charlotte Lord. Touch her name, life Lord. in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for strength. I pray for favor. And, Lord, I pray that your will be done for each of them, especially for uh, Charlotte right now. Lord, in Jesus' name, let your will be done on earth the way it's being done in heaven. Hallelujah. Have your way, God. Holy Spirit, Thank lead you. and guide them. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> we got a prayer request from uh, Lynette. They asked for prayer for Lynette and Will, for God's healing to rest on them. I don't know any more than that, but that's it. Father, we lift up Lynette and Will. You know what it is that they need <clears throat> so father we lift them up to you now in faith believing that you would intersect with their lives yes. in such a way that they are both drawn to you and throughout being drawn to you lord you will mend fix uh improve heal recover whatever the enemy has stolen from them whatever things they face god i pray individually and collectively that you will have your way in their life in the name of jesus Lord, we bind the works of darkness right now over them, individually and collectively, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your love right now, God. Thank you, Lord, that you can intersect them. You can intervene in the affairs of men. And, Lord, we ask for you to intervene on their behalf, in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it. Thank you, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So we got a prayer request for uh, <clears throat> from Mary P. That we would pray for somebody else that's connected to her. That there would be a healing in that relationship and you would do something in their lives. Father, we just lift up the circumstance that was put before us and we ask for the wisdom of how to pray. And God, I ask right now that you would save, if they're not saved, both parties. And, Lord, those who are saved, I pray that you continue to bring them into uh, the light of your word so they, they could obey what you call them to do in this situation. And we pray that you will be the oil in between them and that whatever has been an offense, Lord, that it will be removed. We pray for a healing to happen right now in Jesus' name. Whatever is out of order, bring it into alignment with your will. And we pray that according to your word of God. Thank you for it. Lord, thank you for salvation. Thank you for deliverance. Lord, I pray for the past of most of our lives have things that try to creep into the present. And Lord, we take authority of those things that don't belong in the present. And we ask for your healing power in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's see. Go down this list here. Uh, <clears throat> We had a press a prayer request for Jenny. I think it's by Jenny, and uh, 
let's see how can I express this real quick. Um, she's she's already kind of prayed this prayer, and so we're gonna agree with her that she brings her relationship with Ron to you, and ask you that is God to be in the midst of it. I miss him every day, and I care deeply about his well-being. I believe that you're bringing Ron to a close, saving relationship with Christ daily, according to your will. So that's what we want to pray for them. Lord, we lift up Ron to you right now. You. And Father, we claim salvation for him first. Yes. We claim him having a relationship with you. Yes. We ask that your ministering angels go where he is. Yes. And right now, bring him to salvation. Bring him to a place where he makes a decision or has the opportunity to make a decision uh, for or against you, God. And I pray that your love is strong enough, that it's irresistible, that he chooses life and chooses you. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray for the relationship that he may have uh, with this woman who maybe she's his wife, husband or wife. Either way, Lord, that you would work on their hearts to put them in the right place so that they have things in alignment with your will. So we ask for your will to be done in each of their lives, both individually and collectively. And we ask for salvation, healing, deliverance, chain breaking. Lord, minister to them in the ways they need it most, God, in the name of Jesus. We pray your Holy Spirit will bring conviction, direction, and life in your word, in Jesus' name. Thank you for that right now, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And uh, <clears throat> our sister Cora, who's out of town but faithfully watches and is involved in our ministry here, asks for a prayer for her family. Her uncle passed away, and she's asking for the family prayer. Mm -hmm. So, Father, we lift up Uncle Ray's family and, and Cora. Yeah. And Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would touch them in this time of grief. Yes. We ask that you'll come alongside them. And Lord, I pray yes. that you'll lead them toward you, not toward grief, to the place where they have no hope, but toward you where there is hope. Thank you. You're the only one that we can turn to in matters like this, Thank Lord. And Father, we ask right now that your Holy Spirit will come alongside Cora. And we, she, we know she loves you, God, so I pray that your Holy Spirit will bring peace and, and comfort to her during this time of loss. And Lord, for her, the rest of her family that know you, the same for them, Lord. And for those that don't, that you would bring them to a place where they can understand what it feels like to have the hope and the assurance of a relationship with you and heaven in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Use Cora even now, Lord. I pray that you minister through and to her Lord, give her a testimony as a result of this prayer in Thank Jesus' you. name. And let that testimony Thank ring true in the hearts of her friends and family Thank about you. what you're doing in her life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Thank you God. Thank bless you. her again, God. Bless her, bless her. In Jesus' name we Thank pray. You. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, you got one? Yeah, Kim asked us to pray for healing for Brianna Mason. She was diagnosed with hyperthyroidism, which the end result is extreme fatigue. Um, so healing for that, salvation for her, and for Logan. Uh, for Brianna, right? Brianna, yep. For healing and and salvation for Logan? For Brianna and Logan. Oh, both, okay. Yep. All right. <clears throat> Let's call on the name of the Lord. Jesus. Logan and Brianna, hallelujah. Lord, we speak those names with faith right now. We speak those names with confidence that you love Logan and Brianna. We thank you for what you've already done in their life, the things that you have done. Lord, I pray for favor over them, that they're blessed to be in the kingdom of God because Kim has brought their name up before you and we're bringing their names up before the throne. Lord, we ask right now for salvation and joy and peace that comes as a relationship with you as a result of it lord i pray for hope i pray for strength i pray that salvation and the whole kit and kaboom the abundant life for both logan and brianna in jesus name lord we take authority over the enemy that's trying to dis 
sieve them into death. We bind his work, we bind his words, we bind the snares that he has set up for them, the traps, we come against every one of them, and we plead the blood of Jesus over Logan and Brianna right now. In Jesus' name, God, we pray right now that your ministering angels will go before them and go to them and minister spirits. You said that in your word, so we're praying that in alignment with your word, that you would help them to come to a knowledge of Jesus Christ and have eternal life and have the joy and the abundant life that we ex uh, uh, experience all the time, God. Thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, for doing that for them right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Praise your name, Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I have a request here from uh, Dan that he can get it right this time with his relationship and his family. Get it right this time. Father, we lift up Dan to you right now. Lord, I appreciate the heart of getting it right. And so, Lord, we, we pray in uh, agreement with him that he would get it right with you. Because you're the one that when you get it right, everything else starts lining up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Seeking your kingdom and its righteousness, we can expect things to start to line up with your obedience to your word. So we pray for Dan now and his family that your Holy Spirit would lead him in paths of righteousness and that his steps would be ordered by you. And God, that you will help bring him into alignment with his will and your will, that he's yes to you and that he's walking after you in such a way that his family wants the life that he has. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help him to make the right decisions at the right time, say the right things that are true. Not, not the right words, but things that are actually true of you and him. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray for blessing over his life. I pray for his heart to be renewed and his mind to be renewed according to your word. Lord, that you give him beauty for ashes. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for touching his life. And we lift other people who are in a similar position to Try to bring restoration back to their families and their relationship, Lord. We ask that your will will be done in each heart. We pray for an ability to discern the difference between right and wrong. We pray for our hunger and our thirst for righteousness. That you said anyone who hungers and thirsts for righteousness shall, will absolutely be filled. And Father, we pray for that because that's what changes the atmosphere. The renewing of the mind and the heart change that's necessary. Lord, we thank you for that life for each of these families, especially Dan now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> thank you, Lord. Uh, there's another one that said, pray that I stay off drugs and that my family and kids are safe. And the Lord bless them also. I stay off cigarette and smoking, cigars and smoking. So I don't know who this is. I can't see the name on it but God knows who it was or is. And so we're going to pray for that person right now. Let's call out on God to the Lord for this man. Lord, we thank you that this man would stay off drugs because he stays on with you. Lord, I pray that the light of your countenance would shine fully in his face. Lord, that he'll only be able to see you and you glorify. That he'll only be able to see the things that you have for him that he'll only be able to see that he can be the righteousness of God through the blood of Jesus, and that you look at him as a whole perfect man because of that. So, Lord, I pray that you would help him to live in the truth, that he can be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Open the eyes of his heart and reveal your truths to him that become anchors that stabilize his life in the name of Jesus. Lord, we rebuke sickness and disease. We rebuke the mindset of the world that says that once you're on drugs or once you have done those things, Lord, that you are always that. No, no, God, you said all things pass away. Behold, all things become new. He that the Son sets free is free indeed. And so, Father, we pray in agreement now with this young man or, or woman, whoever this is, that wants to be delivered from drugs, that not only would they stay off of them, but that they would get on to the truth of the life that you have for them. And the result of that is that the family walks after God. 
We pray for a restoration of families. We know the enemy has, has been real strategic in tearing down families for the last 30, 40, 50 years. And God, we rebuke that idea. We come against it in the name of Jesus for this family. And we ask now in Jesus' name that you'll restore what the canker worm and the locust and the moth have taken away from them. Bring back family the way you designed it with love and headship in Jesus Christ. We thank you for that. Lord, I pray for his uh, habit for smoking, that it would just drop. As he makes connections to you, that that habit would just drop off of him. It'll be a nasty taste in his mouth the next time he picks up a cigarette. It will make him hurl in the name of Jesus. Lord, he'll have such a res uh, regurgitation from that smell and that attitude that wants him to smoke, God, that he'll be turned away from it. We pray it in Jesus' name. We thank you that you can do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we've even asked or what we could think on this behalf of this family in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's see. Uh, there's a request here for reuniting with my son. So we ask for, Lord, this young man who wants to be reunited with his son. We pray, Lord, that you will help him to be united with you first. That he can be the person that he's supposed to be. So that when he is reunited with his son, that things go the way you want them to. He can be an example of a godly man. So, Father, use him to be a blessing. I pray that you would uh, resolve some of the issues with his relationship with his son, whatever they might be. We ask for your blessing over that, and we ask that you'll uh, continue to make him the man you want him to be. Strengthen him in the innermost being, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in him richly, in Jesus' name, for your glory, God. And we thank you for it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Um, we got a request from Lily that she has a, she wants complete healing of leukemia, cancer. She's been diagnosed since January, and she's undergoing treatment, and she wants to be healed from it. So, Father, we thank you that you're the great healer. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You can heal. And I thank you that she's going straight to the source for healing. <clears throat> and Lord, we rebuke cancer in her body, leukemia in particular. We speak against that in the name of Jesus. We curse the root of it in Jesus' name. We take authority over cancer in her body now in Jesus' name. It's not the will of the Father for her to have cancer, so we come against it in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for healing for Lily, right now, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for the treatment that she is having, that it would totally restore her. It would be restorative to her health, and that uh, whatever the treatments are, that they produce health and strength and life in her, in the name of Jesus, in spite of, in spite of, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Touch Lily in her body. We speak healing to Lily. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. And we got a request from Diane for pray for her brother. Apparently he died. And uh, she's, I don't know. This came in a few, the day before Easter. So it says, we prayed together the night before that he died and shared scriptures. He was in agreement in prayer about forgiveness uh, of sins. So we'll pray for that those things were true. <clears throat> I don't think we can affect anything now, but we'll just believe God with her that he came to Christ. And Lord, we pray for Diane right now in yes, Jesus' God. name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that she had an opportunity to talk to her brother. Thank you, Lord, that you um, gave her what to say. And you, she scared, shared scriptures with him. So, Lord, I ask that you would give comfort to Diane right now as she suffers the loss of her, her brother, Lord. 
we pray that he made it into you, Lord, that he made his terms right with you, that he got it straight in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask for a blessing over her and her family and the loss of their brother or whatever he was to whomever. Lord, that we ask that you would bless them and comfort them and remind them that you love them and that they can be in heaven too, God. We pray for you to get glory out of this situation in spite of it. Bless Diane again, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Let's see. We pray for Elena. And she's asking for prayer for her family. She didn't say what for, but also that uh, they get to move in their own apartment soon. So, Father, we pray for provision for this couple, Elena and her husband. We ask that you'll make a way for them. Lord, I ask that you would uh, provide for them and help them as they uh, take steps to move into a new place, um, that you provide financial strength for them, that you'll give them um, the things that they need. So, Lord, I ask for um, a financial blessing for them. I ask that you'll open the eyes of their heart and their understanding that you are the source of everything they need and that they can depend on you. I pray that you would teach them by your spirit and your word the things that they need to know. Strengthen them as they go, Lord. Encourage their hearts right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for them. Bless them in a mighty way in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody have any prayer requests in here? Yes. I do because... I work in a workshop during the day at my apartment building because I'm transplanting seedling plants to go in my garden. There's a young man in there that's working and he's a mechanical engineer and he's making a gift in a 3D printer. And we're visiting and yesterday he hit me with the fact that Lucifer's the good guy oh, and Jesus is the bad guy. And What's his name? I don't know even know his name. Okay, Nancy's work co-worker. Yeah, he's just... Well, he's in trouble now. I know. Go ahead. <laughs> it's like, I <clears throat> right out and, and I... The Lord has me there for a reason. I mean, you don't come next to me and God doesn't know that you're there. And so I know the Lord has mercy for him. Yes. And he grew up in an ice cold thing, family that you couldn't do anything and it was horrible. And his mother is a professor in Washington State, revered occultist. Okay. He actually said that to you? Yeah, he told me the whole nine yards. And he was trying to tell me how uh, Lucifer is really the good guy. And don't tell me that, Luciferian baloney. No, thank you. And well, anyway, the Lord has to give me the precise, powerful words. I already, I already spoke everything I know in the Lord, but it's like I will see him again probably tomorrow. And All right. So I this a couple people right. stretch your hands to her yeah. right now. Yeah, First of all, God, we pray that your anointing, yeah. Holy Ghost anointing, will rest upon yeah. Nancy right now. Yeah. We pray for favor over her right now. We pray for the Holy Spirit to send ministering spirits ahead of her right now in the name of Jesus. We pray victory over her life and the things that you would have her say that be filled with the power of the words of God in the name of Jesus. Now we take authority over this young man, the spirit behind this young man, the devil. We come against you, devil, in the name of Jesus. I command you right now in the name of Jesus to step away from this young man. We bind every occultic spirit, every demonic spirit, every lie of the enemy. We come against it and we command that you have no authority in this situation. So when Nancy begins to minister to him, you will not retaliate in the name of Jesus. You will step aside. The blood of Jesus is against you. And that young man is coming into the kingdom of God, either by his choice, because you have no way of stopping him. In Jesus' name, God, we pray right now, in Jesus' name, that your love would break through. It's not by might, nor by 
by any of the things we say, but it's your Holy Spirit power that brings life to somebody right now. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood. We thank you for it. We pray that he would come to a saving understanding and knowledge, not just in his head, but in his heart, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody comes to the Father except through Jesus. So, Lord, you be glorified in this situation. And we pray for salvation, healing, and deliverance for this young man right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for Nancy's willingness to speak up on your behalf. We pray for your anointing to rest fully on her. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That scripture comes to me that Paul said, I don't, I don't, I'm not coming to you with a lot of fancy words, but a demonstration of the Spirit's power that you might know who the God is that I serve. In Jesus' name, we bless that over you right now. We speak that over you. Before he told me all that, the night before, because he had worked there several days, before he left, he hugged me. He loves me. Yeah. I mean, I come in and, you know. That's why you're there. I'm there. I know I'm there. That's why you're there. And it's like, I was not going to deny the Lord and and my love for the Lord and who the Lord is. And I wasn't going to get in a big argument with him. I was just going to speak the truth. There you go. And I let him go. And then I know now, now it's like, I want it like your outcome. I want him saying, oh, you know, you're right. Jesus is the one. But anyway. I'm going to love him in the Lord. Amen. As we were praying, Lee said, stand down. That's right. That's right. Okay. That's like that. That's a, there, what do you call it? That's a, Boy, a war you, term. When you bring yeah, that kind of right. talk to me. Get back. Get you're, back. You're, right. you're, you're on dangerous ground when you start telling me the enemy is the good guy. Don't even give me that. It's called step off. <laughs> step off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and fall fast. You, you need to go somewhere else. <clears throat> we got a request for prayer. Uh, it's a little convoluted here, but we're going to pray for uh, Nikki's Aunt Debbie, that she'll be healed from some sickness that I can't read, and she's got a surgery about it, so we're going to ask God to step in and enjoy, and uh, bless the surgery and give her healing from whatever her Aunt Debbie is going through. So, Father, we lift up Nikki to you right now. We thank you for her request. <clears throat> we ask that, Lord, I pray, I pray for, for Nikki, Lord, that you continue to fuel the fire of the idea in her spirit that you answer prayer and that you're the one to turn to in times like this. And so I pray for her Aunt Debbie that she would come to that same place of knowing that she can turn toward you in times of difficulty and no matter what's going on. So in this surgery that she's about to go through lord we ask for healing in her body not just from the surgery but even before they touch her that you would put your hand on the situation and we pray for restoring and recovery and healing for aunt debbie right now in jesus name <clears throat> and lord i pray that you have a perfect plan for her stepdad to uh, be changed from one place to another for the situation that he's in with his back and the surgery and all the things that are going on with that, that you would take care of it. So we cast the care of this over onto you. We pray that you'll help Nikki and her dad or stepdad and mom and whomever to cast the care of this onto you and to reach out to you, that you would help them in this time right now. Help them to know that you care about them, Lord. And we pray for them now that your grace and mercy would be extended on their behalf. And we pray that you'll do something about this situation. Straighten it out. Organize it. Let it be to your glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. And we thank you for that. Thank you, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. See, I think I got everything up here. Got all these prayer requests. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Any more? You got yeah. one. Has uh, anybody heard me? No, I don't. I haven't, and uh, we haven't gotten anything here because I checked. Okay. Yeah, so we'll just pray for them now yeah, since you brought it up. Father, we thank you for Elizabeth and her son. 
I think it's Raj. We ask that you'll touch them, Lord, that you'll continue the process of healing. We thank you that things worked out so they could even get the surgery. And now, Lord, we ask that things are happening that will bring him back to full health. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Meet their needs, God. Bless them right now. Let their faith be increased to trust you for more. In the name of Jesus. So we ask for healing power over him. Healing. Restorative healing. That he comes back to normal, God. Back to a new normal of being healthy and doing the purpose you created him for. Lord, let your will be done in his life now according to your plan. In Jesus' name, bless Elizabeth as she takes care of him and intercedes on his behalf. We pray for strength for her, even as she's working and doing the things she has to do, Lord, that you'll make a way for them. In Jesus' name, encourage their heart. Encourage his heart. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, remind them of your great love for them. Now, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Carrie, we'd like to pray for her kids, Morgan, Madison, and Mitchell, healing, salvation, and restoration. Amen. Morgan, Madison, and Mitchell. <clears throat> Lord, we pray for the three M's, Morgan, Madison, and Mitchell. And we pray for mom. We pray that you would bless her heart right now. We know what it feels like to have children out of your will. We pray right now in Jesus' name that that mother's heart would see the light of day in regards to each one of her children in the name of Jesus. So we lift them up to you right now, God. And we ask for salvation for Madison, Mitchell, and the other one. In Jesus' name, we pray that you'll touch them now. We pray that your Holy Spirit would engineer circumstances that they can hear the truth of your word in such a way that they'll want what you have to offer them, God. We pray for salvation healing and deliverance. Lord, I pray that you will undo, undo the lies of the enemy with your truth. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray for a stripping back of all the lies of the enemy. Help them to see the devil for who he is. And then God, give them a huge picture of who you are, that there's nothing too difficult for you, that you love them so much that you sent Jesus down from glory to come and rescue them from the sins that they live in. Lord, that you did that for us, all of us. How much you love us, Lord. We pray for salvation and glory and love and blessing for those children in Jesus' name. God, we lift up other children right now. We lift up parents and children who, uh, parents who have children who need to become salvation filled, who need to be saved, who need to be delivered who need to be broken away from the lies of the enemy, God. We lift each one of them up to you now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God, I'm thinking of a particular person now whose name I can't speak, but you know who they are. And I'm asking for you to do a great work in their heart, even today, even now, in the name of Jesus. Let your word ring true right now, God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We pray for all of those kids, Lord, who are wayward. I pray for those who are mistaken in their path that they're on, that they're going the wrong way. I pray that you'll help them to see the error of their ways and see that you have the right way for them. You created them for a purpose. Help them to understand that and that you have that purpose. And only fulfilling that purpose is what's going to bring them the joy and happiness and the self uh, satisfaction that they have and look for. So God, I pray that you'll bless them now to receive Jesus Christ as their Savior in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our parents and others who prayed for us. And some of us, it was many years. And yet here we are. Thank you. Thank you for those prayers up, Lord, that went before the throne. And likewise, we send these prayers before the throne. And we know that you hear and answer prayer. And thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you that we have an advocate who sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us in accordance with your will. So we just thank you, God, for what you're doing about all these prayers tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. 
Father, I pray for joy, unspeakable, full of glory. I pray for a revelation of Jesus to come in our hearts even, Lord. Let it be clearer every day, God. I pray for your fire to fall. Burn out the dross. Burn out the things that have been distractions for many of us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We pray for fresh anointing, fresh filling, fresh fire in Jesus' name. Let your will be done on earth the way it is being done in heaven. Let your will come to bear in the earth. Use us to be part of that in Jesus' name. Bless this house, Father, in the name of Jesus. Bless this house, Lord. Pour out your spirit on all flesh in this house. Bring wisdom and leadership and direction to what we do in the name of Jesus. Thank you for harvest. We lift up the service this Sunday. We lift the ministries up that are going on this week, every one of them. We lift, up, uh, we lift up warm heads and hearts, Lord. We ask for those workers to be anointed to do the scarves and, and uh, head, hats and all the things that they do. <clears throat> Bless their conversation. Bless their time together. Let it be good fellowship and encouragement. Lord, we pray for Celebrate Recovery. And we ask that you'll bless our sister Sheila and all those who lead in that ministry. Pour out your love on them. Strengthen them and encourage them, Lord. Keep them safe. Protect them, Lord, as they stand in the firing line for you. And, Lord, I pray for those who are in the ministry who are receiving what they're given. I pray that you'll bring them continually to the throne, Lord, that you will break off the chains of habits and addictions that are not like you. And, Lord, that you would reverse the curse of the enemy. We pray for supernatural input and fire to fall right now. Break every chain in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over this ministry even now, God. And we pray for super, supernatural, powerful manifestations of your love and your power to break the enemy's chains in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it, Lord. We lift up our children's ministry to you. To all those kids that came this last weekend, Lord, whose hearts and lives were touched, we pray that you'll bring them back again this week in Jesus' name. Looking for more of your presence. Anoint those who work and prepare in that ministry. Bless Pastor Chuck and Sean and, and Elsie and, and Calvin, each one of them, and every teacher, Lord. Anoint them for great work this week. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray for Pastor Richard and for our service this Sunday. And Rob, as he leads us in worship, and the worship ministry and the ushers and all that's going to happen this Sunday. We we'll lift that service up to you now. We ask that you'll have your way even now. Prepare the hearts and minds of everyone you want to be there. Lord, let there be a tremendous blessing of praise and worship and your presence, Father. Fill this house with your presence in your people. Lord, I pray that joy would be released in the house. In the name of Jesus, we pray for salvation, healing, and deliverance. In Jesus' name. And God, I pray for logistics in this house. That all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose so that things work the way you designed them to in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you're going to do. Bless the word to our hearts. Bless our preparation time in Jesus' mighty name. And we give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Yes. Pat wants us to pray, Pat Porter. Um, healing for her family. She has two brothers that need care. And I believe her mom is taking care of those brothers and the relationships are strained. Okay. Lord, we lift up our sister Pat. <clears throat> we pray for her mom. We pray for her brothers. Lord, you have a plan to restore if they would just turn to you. So, Lord, we're turning to you on behalf of Pat. We know she's already turned to you. And we come into agreement with the prayers that she's prayed and the ones that we're praying now, that your will will be done in her family, that the love of Jesus will be expressed in her family, that salvation will be expressed in her family, that the Holy Ghost will be poured out over her family. Lord, that uh, the things that have caused strain would be removed right now in Jesus' name. We pray against every offense that's been there. We bind it in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for forgiveness now to come in Jesus' name. I pray for a restoring of relationship in Jesus' name. We pray for men to be men after your own heart in Jesus' name. We pray for moms and for Pat 
to be uh, the kind of women that would help her brothers and sons to be who they're supposed to be. God, so we pray for a tremendous pour out of your love over that family, that they can walk in unity and harmony. We speak that over them now. The peace of God over them now. <clears throat> in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This scripture comes to me. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Father, let your shadow be over us as we dwell in the secret place. Reveal yourself in the secret place. Even as we begin to delve into your word, as Brother Manny comes, God, that you pour out your spirit again over us so we hear the word of the Lord. Let it be spirit and life. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Well, for those of you that are surprised to see me tonight. <laughs> Amen. Are you not supposed to be here? Well, I had my dates wrong. <laughs> and so uh, my brother-in-law reminded my wife, hey, Manny announced he wouldn't be there. And I go, oh, man, I had the wrong dates. <laughs> anyway, we... We tried to correct that. Those of you that are online, uh, we are glad you're with us. And um, I, I kind of feel bad because we're really getting into some good stuff. Yeah, but, okay. uh, but hopefully everybody can, uh, those online people here, will uh, be able to get the notes and also to uh, view it uh, on, on the live streaming. So... Anyway, before we get started, I just want to take some time to pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, Lord. I just ask, O oh Lord, that you would just work in a mighty way, Lord God, touching every heart that is here this evening, everyone that is watching tonight, O oh God, and those that will watch, O oh Lord, that you would speak to their hearts, give us revelation and understanding, Lord, and we'll give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. So uh, this is our 21st week. Um, I, I said we'd probably have about four more sessions, but as I was looking through, and um, I, it might be four, but we might have to go five to finish it up. So we'll see how it works out. <clears throat> but we're going to look at... Um, uh, chapter basically chapter 18 verses 21 through 24 we read chapter 18 last week but I want to uh, look at those last verses because it kind of uh, in, uh, it, it's a continuation chapter 19 is a continuation of chapter 18 and it makes a little bit more sense if you don't break those up so I'm gonna we're gonna look at chapter 18 verses 21 to 24, and then Revelations 19, 1 through 16. I was hoping to get all the way through Revelations uh, 19, but then as I was doing my study and putting the notes together, I realized that the last verses of chapter 19 are actually a continuation of chapter 20. So I decided that we would pick it up next week in chapter 19, verse 17. Or not next week, because next week... I will not be here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am positive. Amen. I will be in uh, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. My cousin passed away, and we're, I'll be there at her funeral. And so uh, I apologize for the mistake I made last week, but uh, uh, not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday over, we'll pick it back up in chapter 19, verse 17. Amen. So a quick review of chapter 17, 18, which we looked at last week. In uh, the end of chapter 16, 17 to 21, we have the seventh bowl, which represents the, the final wrath of God. And so when this bowl is poured out, uh, verse 17 says, it is done. And what that means is that God, this is God's final uh, 
judgment. And this is when things are going to begin to happen and that we're going to be entering in. And uh, next time we get together, we're going to be looking at the millennium and what that means. And, and here we have the beginning of, of uh, eternity, the beginning of the new earth and heaven and earth. And so uh, that's going to be exciting. But uh, it, when, he, when he says it is done, the Bible says in chapter 17 that there's earthquakes, great hailstones, every island and mountains were no more. And this is the wrath of God uh, being uh, poured out. Then in uh, verse 19 of chapter 16, um, it says, And God uh, remembered uh, Babylon the great. And let me see here, uh, verse 16, verse 19. Yeah. So the New King James uh, says, now that's, and God remember Babylon the Great. That comes out of the ESV translation. But the New King James translates this, uh, great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And I think that's, to me, that's a better uh, understanding of what that means because as I told you last time, when the Bible says God remembers, there's always an action. Whenever he remembers, there's an action tied to that remembrance. And so I think the New King James is a little bit clearer on this because the ESV simply says that God remembered Babylon the Great, and then it, then it goes on about the judgment. But the New King James says Great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup that's the action God. God remembers Babylon. He remembers the abomination. He remembers the deception and the sexual immorality. He remembers the idolatry, and he gives her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Amen. Then in chapter 17, that's the action. He gives her the, the fierceness uh, of his wrath because he remembers his uh, great Babylon's work and the deception that 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 spiritual entity brought to the, uh, to the earth. Chapter 17, we have the great prostitute revealed that deceived the people with her, with her sexual immorality and her idolatry. And we talked at length at that last, uh, last week. And it says I, uh, this uh, great prostitute is identified as Babylon, the spiritual entity that rules the earth, earth's unredeemed uh, people. And talks about the woman, and the woman, the Bible tells us, is this great city. 17, uh, chapter 17, verse 5, says, on, on her forehead, this is the woman, uh, this is the great prostitute, is written, Mystery Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes, and of earth's abomination. So this woman, this Babylon, uh, this great prostitute are one and the same. Amen. And, uh, at, and then... The beast, uh, which is Satan, and the woman, which is the great city, Babylon, we talked about last week, will make war with the lamb as they are making war with the lamb even today. Amen. Right. Even today, uh, they are making war with the lamb of God. So when Satan makes war with God's people, he's making war with, with God. Amen. Right. He's making war with the lamb. And then chapter 17, verse 14 says... But the Lamb will conquer them. Amen. Yes, For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and yes. those with him are called yes. chosen yes. and faithful. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. So even though there's this attack, this unrelenting attack against the people of God, uh, from Satan, from the, the spirit of Babylon, from the spirit of immorality, from the spirit of idolatry, the Lamb is going to conquer. Yes. Amen. Yes. And in the end... Yes. We win. Amen. Yes, In the end, we are the winners. Yes. Then we read chapter 18. And chapter 18 is basically a detailed account of the fall of, of Babylon. It's a detailed account of this world system and its abomination and how God uh, brings them to judgment. So we're not going to go over that too much except that we're going to read the last verses of chapter 18 just to kind of refresh our minds of the finality of, of uh, Babylon's fa uh, fall, which ties in to chapter 19. 
and which is a continuation actually of chapter 19. <clears throat> so let me read those uh, beginning with chapter uh, 18, verse 21. And I'm read if I don't designate on my notes, I'll always be reading out of the New King James. If I'm reading out of ESV, I'll designate that on my notes. So I'll be on the New King James tonight. So verse 21 says, Then a mighty angel <clears throat> took up a stone like a great millstone <clears throat> and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus, with violence, the great city Babylon shall be thrown down. Who's that great city? It's the woman that was yeah. revealed earlier. Amen. Yeah. And shall not be found anymore. <clears throat> the sound of the harpers, musicians, flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in her anymore. No craftsman or any craft shall be found in you anymore. And the sound of the millstone shall not be heard in you anymore. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore, and the voice of a bridegroom and the bride shall not be heard in you anymore, for your merchants were great men of the earth. For by your sorcery all the nations were deceived. And then verse 24, I want us to kind of pay attention to this. It said, in, and in her, that is Babylon, this prostitute, this, this woman, in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and of all who were slain on the earth. Now the thing I want to look at before we move on is in verse 21, it says, Thus with violence the great city Babylon was thrown down and shall be no more. So here the Bible tells us and John writes to us and says that God's coming and he's going to throw down Babylon with violence. Amen. He's going he's gonna to bring Babylon down. And then verse 23 says, For by your sorcery all the nations were deceived. So because of the sorcery of Babylon or the spirit of Babylon, because of uh, immorality, because of idolatry, God's going to, by violence, bring down the great city of, of Babylon because of their sorcery. And then verse 23, Four says, in her, again, that's Babylon, was found the blood of prophets and saints. Now, I want you to remember this statement, and we'll come back to it in just a bit. Amen. So, uh, before we move on, we have any questions before I get into chapter 19? No questions, but I was thinking about it because you said, which I didn't even think about it while we were going through it, but this is the last bowl. Yeah. And the idea that... Before that, there was earthquakes, there was water turned to blood, there was, uh, there was all sorts of, there was the sun scorching people and scorpions and whatever, and that this is the, the, the ultimate yeah. of God's wrath, is this, like the city and making the city drink and whatever, yeah. and basically handing people over to it, reminded me strangely of like Romans 1, 24, that uh, therefore God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies amongst themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. The idea that the ultimate wrath of God is allowing the proliferation of this idolatrous city that will then deceive the world. Amen. That's, Amen. that's crazy considering like earthquakes came before. Yeah. And like scorpions came before ultimate wrath of God, the ultimate bowl is, you have this then. Amen. Amen. He pours it out in full strength. Full strength, full power. Mm -hmm. that, you look at that, the, the, with violence, right. you know, he right. cast down. That's why there's that 30 minute silence in heaven. Amen. Amen. It's the first time he's ever poured it out That's in right. full strength. And he's getting ready. And so what translation did you read that out of? Uh, ESV. ESV, okay. So, um, uh, the another translation says he gave them over to a reprobate mind. Right. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. And so when when you don't when people don't want to have nothing to do with God, God says, "Okay, yeah. you're on your own." Yeah. And He gives us over to our reprobate minds. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So, Hallelujah. That's good. Thank you. Okay, verses one through ten of chapter nineteen. 
Now, <clears throat> after these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, or Alleluia here in the New King James. Salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth with her fornication. And he has avenged on her the blood of his saints shed by her. Now remember I said I want you to kind of remember that. So here he says that he has avenged on her the blood of his servants, uh, servants shed by her. So this is God. When he judges Babylon, he's avenging his, his servants and, uh, and, uh, because of Babylon. And so I want you to look at Revelations uh, 18, well, no, that's 1824 we just read. That's the one we just read. But God's, uh, here in verse uh, 2, it says God's judgments are true and righteous. And so he promises that he's going to repay. Now look at uh, chapter 17, verses 5 and 6. I think in the notes there, uh, Sean had written down 19, but actually it's chapter 17. Uh, there was kind of a confusion as to what chapter that was in, but it's chapter 17, verses 5 and 6, so correct that in your notes. It says, And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. And then look at verse 6, And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement amen and so we see here this uh throughout the book of revelations this 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 uh repetition and reminding us that this woman this babylon this harlot has is drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of jesus christ then look at chapter uh six of, of this in verses six uh, nine and ten uh, says these words, this is talking about the fifth seal, and this is the cry of the martyrs. In verse 9 it says, And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the sun the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who who dwell on the earth. So here we see in the fifth seal, in chapter 6, the, the saints of God and the martyrs of God are crying out to God and says, How long, Lord? When are you going to avenge us? And here in chapter 19, we see God avenging them. Amen? So I just wanted to bring that out. Throughout the revelations, you see this. this uh, uh, you're going back and you're looking at these things. And one of the things you have to understand about the book of Revelations is, is you have to kind of backtrack sometimes to get the full meaning of what's happening. And, why we, and so it really helps to backtrack. So that's, that's why I, I brought those scriptures out. Yeah. So we see here God avenging his saints. Let me read on beginning in verse 3. And again they said, Alleluia, her smoke rises up forever and ever. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who sat on the throne said, Amen, Alleluia. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you servants, and those who fear him, both small and great. That word both isn't really in the translation. That was added by the translators. <coughs> and verse 6, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thunder, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, amen, and his wife has made herself ready, and to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Now think about that. We have always talked about our righteousness is from Jesus Christ, amen. Yes that we are not saved by works, that we are righteous because of what God, Jesus, has done for us. But here's something very interesting here in Revelations. 
that says, you know, we say that to her is granted to be arrayed in fine, in fine linen. So our minds immediately think, go to the gospel. And we think, okay, we're arrayed with the fine linens and the righteousness of Christ, which is true. But then he goes on to say, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. What do you mean? Is it the righteousness of Jesus or is it our acts? Amen. Well, he gives them the white robes. Yeah. It's his righteousness he clothes us in. Yes, amen. We're clothed in it, but it's his. It is his. Because after they say how long, and then he gives them the white robes and tells them to wait a little longer until yeah. the rest of the brethren come in. That is true. But it also says here that the fine linen that we're going to clothe ourselves with at the marriage supper are our righteous our acts. Yeah, because it says yeah, here she was. Right. Uh, it says it was granted her to clothe herself in with fine linen. Right. Okay. There's a there's a key word. It was granted to her. It's granted to us to clothe ourselves in the fine linen, which is the acts of the saints, right. which is us. It's the fellowship That's right. of his suffering that we enter into. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So here's, here's the deal. Let me just put this out for you, and you can tell me what you think about this. This is what I get from this. So we are saved by grace. We are clothed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. But yes. our acts are pleasing to God. Yes. That's right. Amen? Yes. Amen? And why are they pleasing to God? Because we perform them by faith. Yes. The acts... So what, and let me, let me explain this to you. I am not saved because I do missions work and I go overseas and preach to, in other countries. I am not saved by that, but they are righteous acts that God is pleased with. Amen. 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 You are not saved by the amount of the word of God you read or, or to even the people that you witness to, but God is pleased when you share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so those are our righteous acts that though they don't save us and though they are not our righteousness, God grants us at the mar marriage supper to clothe ourselves with the righteous things that we do. Yes. Amen. And even though we do them imperfectly, amen, <laughs> we give imperfectly we witness imperfectly we do the things of God why do we do the things of God because we love God right. amen why do we give to God because we love God and God knows that and God understands and even though we do not perform all these acts and these works perfectly God is still pleased with them amen so think about that to me that's to me that excites me <laughs> amen Amen. Amen. So and all that is true. So what is he what is what are you and I looking for? I hear people always say this. One day we're going to stand before God and what I want to hear is well done. Yeah, me too. Good and faithful servant. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So even though the things that we do may not be perfect yes. we the way we do, I mean we probably make some mistakes and we cuss once in a while. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but we are, do, we are doing by faith these works, yes. you know. We are by faith, you know. Uh, I give to help uh, people around the world by faith. By Christ. faith, you know, because, you know, uh, in my natural, I wouldn't, probably wouldn't do that, you know. But, you know, by faith, because God has asked me yes. to do this, you know. And we do it, and so we stand. So that, that's just really clear. interesting, huh? He makes it perfectly clear that salvation is granted to those who testify of it. Amen. Yeah. 
I was just thinking, like, now in my mind, I have this image, strangely enough, of, like, God the Father having this gigantic refrigerator. <laughs> and, like, we put all of these incredible <coughs> macaroni art, but he loves them anyway because, like, we're always making macaroni art of him. But it's not always the best quality, but it comes with the best of intentions. So here's, like, God the Father just looking at that fridge being like, well, I must confess, I've never done macaroni art. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> amen, amen. I was thinking about something, I lost it, but it's the macaroni art. It'll yeah. do it every time. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, you know, back in the day, people would make ashtrays or yeah, like, yeah. camp art. Yeah, I get it. Oh, oh man, I almost had it again. Uh, it'll come back. It'll also, come to. Uh, I think the things that we're talking about too is that we're following Christ, and Christ is leading us to do certain things during our time on earth that there is reward for in heaven, and a lot of the things that He leads us to do, or at least one big one, is is in the terms of suffering. And there is reward. I mean, you're going to be rewarded for what you suffer. And the guy next to you that isn't, he won't. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like he's making it fair. And there is an element of suffering, but it comes by following Jesus. Yeah. I, I did remember what I was going to say. So Jesus said, lay up for yourself Treasure. treasures in heaven. In heaven. Amen. Amen. So those treasures we can lay up here by doing yes. the work of God. Mm -hmm. And so when you understand that in that realm, then you begin to understand in greater detail the, uh, the epistle of James. Mm -hmm. Amen. And which we're not going to get into tonight, but you know, there's been a lot of controversy about that, you know. But when you begin to understand and put everything in the right perspective, then it begins to make sense. Yes, Amen. Does. So verse 9 says, uh, Then he said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now, we're going to get into that uh, uh, here in just a minute. But before we get into that, as I was reading through these verses and, and studying for uh, tonight's study, uh, several things jumped out at me. The, the number one thing that jumped out at me is this word uh, in, we see in verse 1, 19 verse 1, is the cry of Alleluia. Now, if you have an ESV translation, it'll be hallelujah. And so this word, hallelujah, is mentioned four times here in the book, of, in this chapter. And that's in verse 1, verse 3, verse 4, and verse 6. Now, what's interesting, this word, hallelujah, only occurs here in the New Testament. Nowhere else in the New Testament does this, because hallelujah comes from the Greek term, praise Yahweh. I've heard some people say it means praise ye the Lord. But often we see this word in the, in the Psalms, and we're going to look at a few examples here in just a minute. But, you know, you read in the New Testament, and you're going to see uh, the word praise the Lord and stuff like that. But this word hallelujah is not used. It's because it is a Hebrew Translation. So John takes the Hebrew translation or the Hebrew word hallelujah or alleluia, however you want to pronounce, uh, pronounce it, which in the Old Testament meant praise Yahweh or praise ye the Lord. And so he uses it here in the book of Revelations. And interestingly enough, it's nowhere else in the New Testament. And it's the highest praise. <clears throat> Amen. So we, uh, to get a a better understanding of that, I'm going to read some scriptures out of Psalms that use this word, Alleluia. 
In Psalms 134, it says, Behold, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth bless you from Zion. Then Psalms 135 says, Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, you servants of the Lord, who you who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises to his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself, Israel for his special treasure. Now, when I read that today, and I was reading over that, God spoke to my heart and says, when I read that the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself and Israel for his special treasure, uh, that word special treasure can be translated for his precious possession. It's like God spoke to my heart. He says, God has chosen you. God has chosen me to be his special possession, to be his special treasure. Amen. Amen. And so this word, uh, and let me read, uh, before I get into that, let me read Psalms 113. Praise the Lord. Now, if you have a Bible with, uh, with, uh, that translates these words, that word, praise the Lord, is literally one word, which is hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord from its time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. And so we see here, look in verse 113, verse, uh, uh, verse 1 begins with praise the Lord or hallelujah. Verse 2 says, blessed be the name of the Lord. And then we look back in Psalms 134, it goes three verses, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Then Psalms 135, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And so as I was thinking of that, and this word hallelujah is translated praise the Lord, and sometimes it's translated bless the Lord, and they're used interchangeably. So Psalms 113 opens up with hallelujah, which is translated praise the Lord. So we see here, bless the Lord, praise the Lord are used interchangeably in the Hebrew. Amen. So when you say praise the Lord, you are giving God the ultimate praise. But also when you say bless the Lord, you are blessing him for who he is and for his greatness. Or you can simply say hallelujah. Amen. It's all about him. So, we see this word, hallelujah. This has kind of jumped out at me when I was reading this uh, today. <clears throat> Actually, a couple days ago I was reading it, but I was putting it together to get today. But So I want to just, for a moment, take some time to examine everywhere this word is used here in Revelation 19 and why. So the first time we see it used is here in verse 1. It says, I heard a loud voice saying hallelujah. So why is that word there? He is saying hallelujah. Why? For salvation and glory and honor and power belong to the Lord our God. Amen. Amen. So that's the first hallelujah or how, why it's used. The second hallelujah is in verse 3. And again they said hallelujah. Now so why are they saying hallelujah again? For her smoke rises up forever and ever. Amen. And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who sat on the throne. Her smoke, okay? The smoke of, of the judgment of God rises up forever. Amen. Then the third time we see this word hallelujah, uh, it again is in verse 4, saying amen Hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you, his servants, and those who fear him, small and great. So this is the third time that this word is used, Hallelujah, and it's using it in praise and in worship to God. And it's using it because 
God is to be worshipped. Amen. The fourth time we see it used is in verse 6. He says, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of the mighty thunder, saying, Hallelujah. Why are they saying hallelujah? For the Lord God omnipotent. Amen. And so here we see through the, the, the first, uh, what, six verses, amen, that they are praising God with this word, this ultimate word of praise, this, this Hebrew translation. And I'm thinking to myself, why does John use the Hebrew, tra- the Hebrew word here? And I guess it's because it's the ultimate praise. It's the ultimate praise because the earth, in Israel, they, were even, they didn't even like to re, re, recite the name of God. It was so holy. Amen. And so they would use this word, Alleluia. And so then it says in verse 7, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife, that's us, the church, has made herself ready. Amen what we're doing right now. Amen. 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 So, any comments or insights before we move on? Well, <clears throat> just the comment that they were asking how long before you avenge, you know, our blood and now they're praising him cuz he did do it. Yeah, yeah. That's that's it's coming. It's rejoice they're rejoicing. Yeah. <clears throat> We've all I remember when I was a young Christian, we always used to say, I've read the last chapter and we win. <laughs> that was kind of a common saying we used to have back in those days. Yeah. So uh, the second thing I see, I, first thing I see is, is so, how many times in these short verses that word hallelujah is used and how often God is praised for his greatness, for his omnipotence, for his glory, for his salvation for his righteous judgment, amen? Over and over and over again, God is praised and worshiped uh, for that. I wonder if uh, it would stand to reason that because John's just being given, you know, this kind of checklist of things for 20, however many chapters of the book of Revelation, he's not given every single thing he's given yeah. You know, glimpses of this and and questions about that and questions, but you can almost feel an undercurrent of that very word all the way through. Amen. Yes. Amen. Because every time you every time something is written about heaven, you have that undercurrent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of hallelujah or hallelujah or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just there. Yeah. Because you can't do anything else in God's presence. Amen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What what else are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. You know, every time, uh, even the prophets of old, when they came in contact with God, they fell on their faces, you know, or even. We all would be, yeah, yeah, and uh, so uh, trembling, I'm sure, yeah, uh, so even in the book of Hebrews, as you were talking about, that Hebrews uh, talks about that the, even the angels, and Peter writes, he said, even the angels want to look into this thing of salvation, yes. they don't need it. It blows the angel's mind, the salvation of God and what God has done for you and I. The angels are going, 
poof, I don't understand. This is way beyond me. <laughs> Amen. It's probably because they've seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've Amen. They've seen everything. Yeah. How can a God do this yeah. with those knuckleheads? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly, exactly. And so that's powerful. You begin to read. And you begin to see all this as the scriptures all begin to come together, you know, as you begin to look into this. This, 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 is, why I, this is why I think the book of Revelation says, blessed is he who reads this book and, and understands it, because there is a blessing, because you yeah. begin to, things begin to tie together. Go ahead. When I went through the trial of my faith, it was very horrific and it was very painful. But in going through it and the suffering of it, I knew... I belong to him. Amen. Uh, that was my, it's like, yes, I really am his. And I was like jumping for joy and crying at the same time. <laughs> and I would not trade anything in my life for the love I have for Christ and his love for me. Amen. I'll go through it a, a thousand times again. Amen. Oh, Amen. Okay. Yep. I, I, uh. I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. I understand. I, I've been through it and didn't like it when I was going through it, but I, it did. It produced some tremendous things in my life. Amen. So the second thing I see besides this hallelujah is that we are fellow servants with the angels. Verses 9 and 10 says, and he said to me, right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. I'm called, you're called, anybody that's born again is called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. And he said, and that's why, let me, this is just a, a side note, a little rabbit trail here. I think that's why uh, fellowship is so important. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Yes. Throughout the world, even non-Christians, how, how do they relate to one another? How do families relate to another to? Through supper. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And this is how God's going to bring us here. The, the, at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, Those are, these are the true saints of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now before I get into the spirit of prophecy, I want you to look at chapter 22, verses 8 and 9. And, he's, and this is when uh, uh, this is when everything's happening. The glory of God, New Jerusalem is coming down, and uh, the river of life is there. And uh, so uh, uh, Jesus said, "Well, let me look back up to verse seven. This is Jesus saying, "Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book." And then verse 8 says, Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I saw, heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of, feet of the angel who showed me these things. And he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant and of your brethren, the prophets, and of those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. So what is... <clears throat> this spirit of prophecy. This angel says in both places, we have both the angels and you and I have the testimony of Jesus. And he says, which is the spirit of prophecy? What does that mean? You speak the word of God. You speak the word of God. It is the word of God. The spirit of prophecy is the word of God. But even more depth in that, we look at John 5, 38 and 39. Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees, to the religious people of that day. And he says, you do not have his word abide in you, as our sister just said, because whom he sent, him you do not believe. He said, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. So the spirit of the prophecy is all the prof prophets testified of Jesus. Yes. Amen. That's the spirit. Of, and the entire Old Testament points to Jesus. Yes. Amen. And so this is the spirit of prophecy. And so here the angel says to John, he says, you and I are brothers because we both have 
the testimony of Jesus Christ, and this is the spirit of prophecy. This is what was prophesied from the beginning of time that Jesus would come and redeem his people. Amen. 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 That we're in that? Yeah, we are in that. Praise <laughs> God. Amen. You know, people always say, yeah, I'd really like to live in the days of Jesus. I actually, I think we're, we're, we're privileged to live in these last days. Yeah. Amen. You know, I had a friend of mine tell me, he used to live in my apartment building, he moved to Texas, he preaches down there now, and he told me that there's no need for him to read the book of Revelations because we're not going to be here anyway. <laughs> I had to spank him. <laughs> I, had to, I had to give him a little spanking. Mm -hmm. I said, God made it perfectly clear that man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, and that's from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. Yeah. And I've had. And he texted me back. He, he started texting me all these different scriptures from the book of Revelation. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's, it's interesting because uh, I'm not, it's not because of me or anything, but I know lots of people in church come to me and say, man, I never understood until we started this study, you know, and I've learned so much. And, and uh, uh, Elizabeth came to me one time. She says, I always avoided the book of Revelation because I didn't understand it. But she says, now I'm understanding it, you know, and so, and, and, other people in church come that watch online. They come to me all the time and say, "Man, they said I never understood that, you know, until you know you brought it out." And I'm not saying it's because of me. I th it's just the Word of God, yeah. and it's just the presence of God. And the, because Ephesians say that you know that we learn the things of God by revelation. By revelation. God speaks to us by revelation. Yes. It's, it's not because we're any smarter. I'm not no smarter than anybody else. It's just that because we have a desire and a burden to know, yes. God opens up the scriptures. Yeah. And this is why I like this format, because I like I want to know what you think. I want to know, get your ideas, your revelations. I'm not yes. I'm not here to be um, the Pope. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So Verses 11 through 16. Yay! Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and now I saw, this is pretty self-explanatory. Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judge and makes war. Who's this sitting on the white horse? The hero! Amen. Jesus. What faithful and true. Chapter 19. Verses 11, yeah. chapter, then now we're in 12. Okay. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. And this Word... His robe is dipped in blood. Amen. Verse 14, And the armies of heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, a two-edged, that's a two-edged sword. Amen. Which is what? The word of God. Amen. That which that with which he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress, of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. Yes. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. That word says something, fierceness. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So, little note I put in there, it says, if you don't know how to ride a horse now, you will when we come back with Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll be you'll be riding one when it comes. To it. <laughs> he says, where he says, and the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, linen. This is verse fourteen. Will follow him on white horses. Amen. So we'll be following on white horses. Amen. 
So here in these verses, we see all the attributes of Jesus on display. And let's look at some of these. He's faithful and true. Yeah. He's a righteous judge. He has eyes like a flame of fire. Amen. He can look right into your heart. Amen. And convict you. Amen. His robe is dipped in blood. His name is the word of God. And out of his mouth is a sharp two-edged sword. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords for all eternity. Amen. Amen. So I just want to close with 1 Corinthians 15, 20 to 28 with these scriptures, these verses that we just read. Think about these verses that we just read and then listen to 1 Corinthians 15, 20. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. And as in Adam all die, so in Christ all shall be made alive. Each one in his own order, Christ the first fruit, afterwards those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end. When he delivers, that's Jesus, delivers the kingdom of God to the Father. Now look at that. What's Paul saying here? Jesus is going to deliver the kingdom of God to his Father. Then he puts on, he puts an end to all the rule and all authority, all authority and power. He says, Jesus is going to put an end to Babylon. He's going to put an end to the prostitute. He's going to put an end to all sin. He's going to put an end to the power of the earth. Verse 25, for he must reign till he puts all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Verse 27, for he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are under, put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Verse 28, this is powerful. Now when all things are made subject to him, who's him? Jesus. Jesus. Then the Son himself will also be subject to him who put all things under him that, that God may be all in all. So that second him, so, let me read that again so this clarifies in your heart and your mind. Then the Son himself will also be subject to him. That's the Father who put all things under him. That's the Son that God may be all in all. Perfect. Okay. Powerful, awesome. powerful scripture. Amen. Awesome. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your revelation. We thank you for your son. We thank you that you came and died for our sins and rose again the third day. We glorify you. We praise you. We worship you. And we say unto you, hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord our God. Father, we praise you and glorify you. Amen. Amen. Don't forget this Sunday we have prayer at 930 and church services at 10 o'clock. Amen. Come on out and hear the word of God and get, be in the presence of God.